Texas journalist Greg Siegel got to the scene within minutes of the blast, and he talked to CNN's Mike Chinoy about what he saw. Nothing. There was just basically the skeleton uh, of the building. It was an inferno, and uh, you could just barely see the frame of the building. And and uh, I just hope the people weren't inside that building because.
sometimes it's an impossible dream, but it happened. I'm one of the owners of WYLD, and my father was a Pullman porter. He was a Pullman porter for 45 years. He never made more than $8,000 in, in any given year of his life. He was my example in terms of my mother and my father. All of you are winners. All of you are very deserving. Our resources are limited, but you have and are climbing that mountain. Thank you.
And that is something that is tragic for all of us. And hopefully, we, those of us who are in this audience, will not just think about our own, but think also about those who are not able to succeed, no matter what it is. Since we are commemorating Black History Month in February, I thought it very appropriate to take a quotation from a black educator, one who is world-renowned, Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington said that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed. I know that all of you who participated in this essay contest had some obstacles to overcome. First of all, it's the natural obstacle of inertia, the, the natural obstacle that uh, we all feel when we do not want to do something that requires effort on our part. If you were here today, all of you are great successes. Congratulations. Keep up with your work. All of you. Whereas the New World was a 
place of freedom for all other races. It was a land of slavery and degradation for Africans. They were stripped of their cultures, languages, and pride, treated inhumanely and viewed as beasts. Here, the price of education was much too high. Death was a murder. If a slave was caught learning to read and write, he was killed. Thus, a slow, deep conditioning taught Africans to be scholastic non achievers in 1862, Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation passed, quote, freeing the slaves. However, what is freedom to people conditioned not to think? People without food and jobs. This so-called emancipation brought on more problems than it supposedly eradicated. This so-called, excuse me, while blacks gained more legal equality, the deep wounds inflicted in the past had never been bandaged, rendering the African American as socially inferior and powerless as they had been as slaves. As Robert C. Woodruff said, slavery is but half abolished, emancipation is but half completed, while millions of freemen who votes in their hands are left without education. Thus, these laws free blacks on paper, but mentally, emotionally, economically, and educationally, they remain the enslaved people. Today, blacks are still battling this non-achievement goal. While the number of African American doctors and engineers has increased, so has the number of high school dropouts and drug addicts. What should be done about this continues to be asked, but why is this is the question that must be dealt with. Statistics show that there are more black males in jail than college. Moreover, many of those in college had to go through channels such as the U.S. military reserves to fund them. And considering that over 30% of the troops in the Middle East are black, and the expected casualties, it appears that once again, the price of an education for many blacks will be death. However, the value of an education should not be measured only in monetary terms. Rather, it should manifest itself in a simple yet profound form of being able to ask why and having the ability to find the answer. It should come in the form of self-reliance and thought and action. It should come in the form of finding the truth, which is the only thing that will ultimately save the American society. The African American race is the only thing that will enable all of us to share the dream.
be Easter to you. I'll be Easter. I would take my glasses off. Picture suit, and turn around. That the whole house mm -hmm. wanna have. Matter of fact, she died in this house. She died being here. And um, Ada and Mabel moved some years later to Durban Street. But this is where they grew up. On this street. Really? Mm-hmm. Right. the porch. Put up iron doors. Mm -hmm. You can see that, huh? That's great. And they got them all around. That church oh. never did have no iron doors on it like that. Yeah, that man is my downfall. Look at your back of a corner. You go to me. She hates to come out now. We have to come back. No, I don't know where I'm just. Well, I'm taking a big cord. I feel like I remember they had a little yard behind that. Wait, 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 wait. She can't get on. One single room at the top. Look, your mother first grade class over here. Mm -hmm. Easter money. I'm pretty, you know, I know it, I'm, I'm, it might be, because first grade and second grade was probably all 
a blur. In a building. But and, what's and that shack back there? And it used to be a mess then, you know? A bathroom? Yeah, a little small building in between with the green doors. Okay. Drugs in here. You're sitting around without buying something. It's not a hospital or boarding hall. Don't stand in front of business. <laughs> Don't carry drugs in here. No sitting on the front step without buying something. <laughs> obstructing your view. This house goes on and on, you know. There's a new, uh, not new, but I mean, like where he renovated and he was living in it. The owner and, uh, oh, wow, you know, I've always been afraid of that. I don't like it. So they have to buy She was a pharmacy manager and she kept trying to get this one girl fired. She didn't like this one ring. She didn't like this one girl for no reason. She she bark at everybody and this one girl would be the only one to ever cry. You know she really taunted this girl and this girl was so crying. And that was the one girl that she didn't like. She kept trying to get her fired. <laughs> I know fully what you And this girl quit. She quit, to she quit twice. You know, and they'd always, the manager would come back. You know, just please come back, you know, and then, you know, just don't go. They had this so that this girl couldn't even go in the pharmacy. She didn't work in the back. You know, that was a stipulation. She didn't work at the pharmacy. She didn't go in the pharmacy. She didn't go anywhere near this lady. <laughs> Whoa. You know, that's what provokes people to kill each other. I mean, the people that were working that needed their jobs. I didn't need mine, so I didn't care. I was just working for pocket money. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was so lucky. Just the eyes, the nose, and how about that? I said, how do you know this isn't people? I'm adopted. And torturing. You know how bodies just become missing? That's what mama used to always be afraid of. The What she used to say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We love you. 
Right. Hi, that's my best. Here's a basket just for you. Put that on that basket. There's some nice flowers for you, Eddie. We're so glad that you didn't have to go to Saudi Arabia. But yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna be having to the all for you.
starting now. Did you take the picture yet? Uh uh. I didn't see a flash. Harry Connick get over the date to film. Creole And I dream about Eddie. Eddie, Eddie, we're real proud of you. And we miss you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs>
I'll be moving. Don't look at me. You like all that show? No, I can, but it would be doing something and just stand still. Oh, he wants to show this on your list. Look, here he is. What knows you want it to turn out? And here's to you, Miss Robinson. Come on in. Did you hear your chairman section? In section L? that I needed in order to get the diploma. Uh -huh. I got over there and I had an empty plastic bag. And I said, ah, I don't have no paper. See, the, they said you've got to have those papers, so we had to go back. And it was oh, raining. No. And went back to where Ellen dropped us off to look to see for the papers. So as I walked in, who did I see but my supervisor who I worked on?
Say hi to the red light. See the little tiny red light? Red light. You see, once you, you saw it had the two legs in it. I didn't know. I wasn't expecting that. But it's wrong because I've had Catherine all my life. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I can't change anything until mm -hmm. you show me more proof that you're Catherine. Mm -hmm. these but these are records from the church. Yeah. Yeah. You would think that they yeah. would know first because it yeah. happened there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I said, well, gosh, how am I going to? Brought it back to the woman and said, see, this is Laura uh -huh. Catherine. She looked at the book and said, well, evidently they must have got y'all twisted up when y'all were babies. Whoever was writing it in a book. Yeah. Yeah. Then she looked next to Leslie's name. And it had, she was born February 27th. Oh, no. Two days later. I said, it has to do with these two names, but she was not going to change it. Well, yeah, that would have been the best and easiest way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I told Leslie that and she just about good. died, you know. It rains it cool. right. <laughs> but what really got me was that when I <laughs> But the oh. say that at the church. Now you see how the church can make mistakes? But look, it had me as Laurie Eileen Moore. I'll be darn. Laurie and she's Eileen? Leslie Ali. Yes, Leslie Ali and, and Laurie Catherine. Catherine. Uh -huh. And they had Leslie Catherine. Oh, so see, at the baptismal, whoever yeah. was writing the records had everything switched. Isn't that and had her And had her birth two days later. Oh, so they they make mistakes <laughs> like that. So wait, y'all got straight? On, yeah, straight now. And then except for the... Yeah, the godparents. The godparents is messed up. Yeah. Mm. But I was holding no. Laura. See, and, and, and on the record, Joy, had, Joy was holding Leslie. And on the record, it says in those days, um, the God mothers carried the, uh, the right, babies, baby, mm -hmm. yeah. not the mothers like we do now. Right, right. Uh huh. That's right. Because we even have pictures. But well, I remember they took pictures at the house. I, I imagine Barbara has those pictures somewhere. evening for what we think is going to be very, very exciting. We're going to do a fashion show for you. The first ever in the Aquarium of the Americas. It's going to be called a Fishful Fashion Fantasy. And I think you'll find it's going to be just that. And right after the fashion show, you're free to wander around and see the exhibits. And the aquarium asked me to please tell you that some of the things won't be as well lit as they would be in the daytime because the computers kick off when everybody leaves. But you're welcome to see them. And there will be refreshments after the fashion show. So eat, drink, and enjoy. And I'm planning on starting right at 7.30. To make your vacation dreams come true. It's bright, it's hot, it's sexy and sexy. Ship a boy, 491 for four weeks. Of Clappy laughing in 491. 
Sports 91 fashions just for you. This is a fabulous promotion in JC Kenny's. We've turned our store into a ship. We want you to come in. Shopping is great fun. You'll see wonderful sweaters like this by Henry Russell. Snow White Pants by Stocker. And the ladies love the seafoam green. Two at 
the summer of 1991. Susan and Camille. This is for New York. Hi, hi, I know Ed so 
Yes. You do? Yes. Well, it's in German. It's his. I know. Hi, hi. And I know Patrice Bell. What, what, what's and your name? My name is Eileen Johnson. I work with Patrice Bell. Okay. Hi, Ed. I'm Eileen. Remember me from the school. We're planning the wedding for now. What wedding? Hint, hint. Oh, oh. Linda. Patrice will kill me. Oh. <laughs> but I'll tell her that I said this on tape. No, no, no. Don't tell her. Don't tell I won't tell her. No, because we won't tell Okay. Well, we won't tell her. I'm going to scratch. Uh -oh. I'm going to scratch all this tape, you know. <laughs> I'm going to edit the tape. So Lynn, this one's flat. Yeah, yeah this good. This good. What kind is it, Dave? What kind is it? Rainbow. Rainbow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there? Oh, this is a puffer now. This is actually poison sponge that you see going And if you agitated it or frightened it, it would gulp water and its body would turn into a complete bowl. Puffy spines. It's like a porcupine. Yeah, but that's why it's called a puffer fish. When they're really little, they're really big. You see this, all the rays that are kind of... Oh, they all look in too. You know, I had fish kind of bite. Okay, that's the time for all. Well, we give them all those treatments when the 
sharks get their vitamins and supplements in there. Oh, and, all, and when um, we put these guys on each of them, we shot with all of them by our Each one of them? Incredible. A real shot with a needle? Yes, A little shot. A little shot. Especially.
and a partnership between the volunteers and the staff of both the park and the museum. And this is in your honor tonight, and we thank you.
Adele's a freak. <laughs> and she wants to be a lawyer. Here it she is. goes up. And well, I grew just up. came in from California. <laughs> and she just came from California with her lovable little sister, Raquel. Alexis. 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 Too late, and then she wants to go to. I what class do you want? I don't know. <laughs> Too late, just, you know, prep no, school. No, I mean, what law school do you want uh -huh. to go to? I don't want to go to law school. Yes, you do. And she, wants, <laughs> she, wants to go, she wants to live in New York City. <laughs>
had it the same yeah, height last year. He had it the same height. Oh, are you serious? Yes, I am. <laughs>